People got terribly anxious and depressed during the COVID. Uh, they, there was so much that they lost. Anxiety disorders when the anxiety that you feel is way out of proportion to the stressor. Anxiety is something that I tell my clients is experienced by 100% of the population at some point in their lives. of the feelings that I would feel with anxiety would be like heart palpitations. I'd start sweating and then I'd be like, oh my God, do I stink? I'm sweating so much. You know, when I get anxiety, I tend to really feel a, just a pit in my stomach that is just never, never ends. So when I feel a panic attack um, about to come over me, there's a lot of physical things that I feel. Um, the first thing is, from my elbow all the way to my hands just goes completely numb and clenches up. Is it genetic? Yeah, we all have it. Is it genetic to the extent of disorders that can be passed along in families, that's true too. Well, everybody has it. The question is the amount, the degree. We all have the, the basis for anxiety, um, but you can get much more anxious if you happen to have a particular genetic temperament that inclines you toward anxiety. Anxiety can be brought on by a number of things. Um, anywhere from a biological disposition to a situation in the present or past. Personality traits like perfectionism are linked to anxiety. And genetics can also play a role in whether or not someone is predisposed to developing an anxiety disorder. In most of my professional life, I have been working as a corporate executive for global companies in business development and marketing. Despite my business background, deep down I'm a researcher and a storyteller, someone who is curious about the world and passionate about creative arts. Throughout my life, I have had my own experiences with anxiety, making the subject very personal to me. Because of this, I embarked on a journey to acquire knowledge about the nature of anxiety and how it could be cured. neural mechanisms of anxiety that we haven't known for some time. Um, I think what might be more exciting is the techniques that you can employ personally to manage your anxiety. I think that's particularly interesting and in particular of those things um, I think flow psychology which isn't new but maybe is coming to people's awareness a little bit more. I guess the most traditional treatment for anxiety is just to um, talk to somebody or do whatever it is that typically comforts you and calms you down. Aaron Beck was one of the founders of CBT, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, and has a history coming from behaviorism. So we've gone beyond that and added the cognitive part, which is really looking at our thoughts also and our feelings and how we can change those, so how we can change our behaviors by looking at our thoughts. After a few months into psychotherapy, I have experienced a setback. It came out of nowhere. I actually felt like I was making a lot of good progress. I felt much better. But when we started uncovering um, some childhood trauma and some pain um, that I have been storing for so many years deep inside me, I've actually started feeling a lot more anxious. I started feeling awful. So awful that my emotional pain was unbearable. I would absolutely love if I could eliminate anxiety 
for my life forever, that would be amazing. Like, this is probably gonna be something that I deal with for the rest of my life, and I'm okay with it. So about six years ago, I met with a psychiatrist for the first time. And prior to that, even though I was a practicing clinician myself, I had a lot of hesitation about getting on medication. And in my upbringing, there was a lot of stigma around that. And I didn't feel um, like I wanted to be dependent on medication for the rest of my life. But I got to a point where nothing I did was working anymore. Neuroleptics provide neurolepsis, which is emotional quieting. So a lot of times if you want a non-addictive way to get at anxiety symptoms, with the, with the contrasting medications being the sedative hypnotics, which have a potential for addiction, right? Xanax and Valium and things like that. You could use atypical antipsychotics, which don't have a potential for addiction. There is no medication that's going to take somebody's anxiety away fully. Um, and so the work is still on the client. The idea of a daily anti-anxiety medication is that it helps them do the work a little bit easier. Part of the problem with neurofeedback is there's no big companies backing the research. Those of us who are doing neurofeedback, those clinicians, um, what we see is profound. It's a non-pharmacological, non-invasive technique in which surface electrodes record neural activity on the scalp with the data being fed back to the patient via a computerized stimuli presentation. We pay attention to how the brain changes over time and obviously we pay attention to uh, the client's original symptoms. What did they come Are you sleeping better? Are you less anxious? Are you getting along better at work or with your husband or wife? In my practice, I use a variety of tools to help individuals manage their anxiety. I often use mindfulness techniques like relaxation, breathing, progressive muscle relaxation, and meditations. I may also suggest lifestyle changes that can help reduce anxiety, like regular exercise and getting enough sleep. I do um, work in nutrition is properly nourishing the body and avoiding inflammatory foods that cause a lot of gastrointestinal issues that can affect the brain. So that mind-body connection, that gut-brain connection is, uh, is very influenced by the type of foods we eat. Uh, the more processed foods, as far as yeast, gluten, mold, refined sugar, dairy, uh, causing distress, feeding those um, certain types of bacteria. So I combine a few different modalities, uh, one of them being Reiki, as well as EFT tapping, and I work with these uh, modalities, sometimes I combine them and sometimes I do them individually. And it's really help, helped me with my anxiety um, to be able to manage it because, you know, with energy, we are all energy. Use a lot of, I, I pray, first of all, when I get, when I get triggered, I, I start praying. I do a lot of deep breathing exercises and I, I do some guided imagery, kind of put my mind to where my happy place is. I am a yoga teacher and I do practice yoga, um, so I feel like that's very important for my personal mental health and uh, it really helps me manage my anxiety. As you can see, there are plenty of evidence-based treatments, methods and tools to treat anxiety. I think what is important to remember that anxiety is a treatable condition. Remember, you are not alone and you don't have to suffer in silence.